Good morning. This is Brother Ben for Timely Truths. There was one day when the topic worship was requested for our Zoom family Bible study group. My first thought was, this is such a broad topic. And if I were to slice and dice it, I would need some Bible passages to use it for it to be relevant for our daily life. How can we even define worship? I've heard it defined as worship. You worship someone for their worth. If they're worth more, you worship them more. If they're worth less, you worship them less. But worship is a lifestyle. Worship is personal. And third, your worship should be directed to the one who is worthy of it. Really, the best way to describe the meaning of worship is through the lens of the scriptures. How a person or a multitude approach God in worship or in a worshipful way. So for the short time allotted, I would like to use three instances. One, in Exodus chapter 15, the Israelites just crossed the Red Sea after a great miracle where God parted the sea while being chased by the Egyptian soldiers. Everyone saw the impossibility, the impossible, experienced the crossing on dry ground. To top it all off, the waters closed in on the Egyptian soldiers, drowning them. Moses and Miriam led the jubilation and saw a glorious celebration, giving God all the credit. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. And then verse 11 says, Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory? working wonders. If one of the Israelites was not rejoicing that day after experiencing the awesome display of God's wonder, he was either very sick or dead, physically and or spiritually. Number two, Habakkuk's experience. His experience was different but we should not be ignorant at how he responded to the frustrations he was facing. We all experience frustrations. Does it mean that God is not there when you don't get the answer? How come evil and wickedness seem to be winning? And yes, the prophet sought for answers to the troubles happening in his world directly to God. And yes, we can bring our complaints to God as well, but always end with the same attitude the prophet has responded with a powerful affirmation of God's sovereignty. Circumstances should not affect our love relationship with our Creator. Harvest, crop failure. Job, laid off. Health, shaky. Investments, negative. We must get back to worshiping God. Life is short. We can't afford to live one day without acknowledging our Lord and our Savior. As the prophet Habakkuk ended his prayer, that despite overwhelming negativity, he remained poised, confident, and said, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful to the God of my Savior, or to the God my Savior. Third, Mary and Martha. They opened their home to Jesus and his disciples. 
And as they were preparing, showing hospitality, Mary found herself caught up with preparation, while Mary found herself sitting at the Lord's feet. Finally, Martha approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, do you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? You can feel the tension of Martha's frustration while she had wanted to be first class host. She had lost focus on her guest. Remember, Martha and Mary were followers of Jesus. Martha called him Lord. Jesus, the teacher, rabbi, Lord as he was, wanted to set everything straight and said to Martha, 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 you are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from What is that one thing needed? Sitting at the feet of Jesus, spending time with him. From crossing the Red Sea jubilation through life's difficulties of Habakkuk, one thing is needed, or there is really one thing worth being concerned about. New Living Translation. That is to sit at the feet of Jesus. Ask yourself, have I been serving God diligently that I had not had time to spend with him? We are not called to continually sit at the feet of Jesus. Or are we called to serve him nonstop? But we must, we must take time to find restoration in his presence. Our highest priority must be to daily align our relationship with our Savior, the Lord Jesus. This is worship at its best. If you have not started, today is the perfect day to begin your spending time with Jesus. Amen.